Felicia. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> you say the best for last. Okay, so let's, you, you got paperwork. Yes, I have court documents and church documents. So we're going to go, okay, I have church documents and court documents, and we're going to go through them and explain the situation. Okay? Okay. So we're going to start with the April Hall of 2022. So you, you remember Pastor Watts went to the April yes. Hall? Uh-huh. Bishop Thuston made the statement there was no need to be reinstated. Well, hold on. Hold on, Felicia. Okay. Who are you? <laughs> I am Felicia Watts, Pastor Watts' daughter, trustee of Westside Ministry, Inc. Are you currently being sued? Oh, yes. Where's my lawsuit? So Bishop Green, let's find that one. Bishop Green is not only suing... Um, Pastor Watts. Okay, this is the person. Bishop Green is suing Pastor Watts, the attorney, Deacon Huff, Sister Huff, what the ministry. Who? Deacon? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Deacon Huff is sick. Well, well, hold on. So this is the one, right? This is the one that Bishop Green is suing all of these people right here. But that's a personal So I always like to keep uh, facts, proofs, and receipts. Uh, the Church of God in Christ, Northwest Florida Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Westside Church of God in Christ. You remember that's the church that Bishop Green made up when he was trying to trick the court because our church is Westside Ministry. So, so who established Westside Church of God in Christ? This one here, Bishop Green did. So Bishop Green established, so it can be proven that in the court records, that what date that this was established? Yes. Okay. Go to Sun Biz. Sun Biz. Mm -hmm. mm, we got businesses on Sun Biz. <laughs> uh, the plaintiffs versus, uh, this is all these folks, Bishop Fights and all these, um, uh, Bishop Green, uh, all these folks just coming against these people here. Uh, Elder Kenneth Watts, individual, and as pastor, as chairman of the board of trustees, Westside Church of God in Christ. Westside Kojic, Westside Ministry Inc., Westside Church of God in Christ of Escambia County. Now, this is this is my problem. Um, if none of this stuff is listed on some biz, how is it on here? See, because you got Westside Church of God, uh, Westside Kojic, mm -hmm. Westside Ministry Inc., mm -hmm. Westside Church of God in Christ of Escambia County. Westside Ministry Inc. again. Mm -hmm. um, if this stuff is not listed on some biz, how do you have it on this court doc? Well, you would have to ask Bishop Green about that. Who, um, brother Gant? But this is the one that the church is suing. So the, the Church of God in Christ is suing Elder Kenneth Watts as pastor and individual. Frankie and Coast and Hub. Wait, wait, why is the Church of God in Christ? This, wait. This is the lawsuit that started everything. But wait a minute. How the Church of God in Christ suing y'all? But then, okay, this is uh, this is January, February, March, um, January, February the 3rd. And then right here, this hey, what year was this? The year of our Lord. Um, this is 23 because that's the general assembly minutes, but this is just. All this stays the same. So this is from the original case. Okay, so this is from the original case. Yes. But April the 9th, 2022, mm -hmm. it was a joint order attached. July the 6th, 2022, mm -hmm. it says, the pro now this is where they was trying to get uh, Sister Huff, well, no, they wanted the church to give the property on G Street to Bishop Watts. To Bishop Green. Bishop Green. So he could pay his legal bills. Oh. Wait a minute. Um, it's saying it's right here too. Hold on. Right there. Uh, the property located... <laughs> Paperwork. The property located at 2313 G Street will be retitled to include the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. And this came from the General Council of the Church of God in Christ. Jonathan Sappho. Jonathan Sappho. Junior, it's right here. Dated July the 6th, 2022. General Counsel, Jonathan Sappho Jr. It says the facility 
has an estimated value of $50,000 to $100,000 and is currently free and clear of all liens and um, encumbrances. I think I'm saying it right. Um, it is recommended that Bishop Green recoup all of his legal fees and other expenses. See, they, I didn't have this when I was... <laughs> mm. Le re recover all his legal fees and any other expenses he may incur in the arising from this action through sale, disposition, or occu occupancy of this property by a newly placed church and or ministry under the supervision of Bishop Green. Carol, that is a violation of nonprofit law. You cannot sell nonprofit property and put the money in your pocket and because Bishop Green filed his lawsuit without the Church of God in Christ. That means that it's his personal lawsuit. So if he was to take our church and sell it and then put that money to recoup his legal fees, that would be a violation. Now I'd also say this mm -hmm. item has been, been deleted. deleted. Mm -hmm. of because of concerns raised as it is implications not the, the intent. intent right because we made them aware that that was a violation so then they deleted it that's july 6 2022 did y'all forget that y'all sent this and there's another one there's another one this is the one for the house's house y'all trying to take the folks house um, and it has a case number on here too. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, attached. This is this is Sappho talking to uh, Bishop J. Drew Sheard. So you can't say you didn't know Bishop Sheard because you attached. You CC right here. Bishop J. Drew Sheard, the presiding, the presidium, presiding bishop, Bishop L. H. Thust, L. F. Thuston, General Assembly Chairman, Bishop Willis C. Green, Lou Willis C. A uh, prelate of Northwest Florida jurisdiction, Dr. Frederick Jenkins. Who is Frederick Jenkins? Dr. Jenkins is the chairman of the committee that they created to deal with uh, this situation that Bishop Green created. So y'all creating? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God, today. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen attached to this letter is a, is a signed final draft of the joint order of the presiding bishop and general assembly in the above reference matter. As you will know, item five of the draft is sent on May the 26th, um, has been deleted from the final draft that was... So the offered, did he mean order, to put four? Um, so the joint order um, had a list of things that had to take place, and we'll find the joint orders in there soon. Okay. And these items were deleted. So you see, this is dated July the 6th. This is dated June the 7th. So this one came first. So the first item that they deleted from the joint order, which was signed by Bishop Shears right here, this is the joint order. Is oh, That's his signature? Mm -hmm. So the order is effective April 6, 2022. Right. Bishop J. Drew Shear, presiding bishop. Um, that's your signature, Bishop Shear, right there. Well, hold on, let me see something else. Oh, that's again. Try to find something else that got his signature on that joint order. That's, that's the only thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I wonder what else he got with his signature on. Or is these people putting your signature on stuff and you don't know nothing about it? Mm, okay, what else? Okay, so the joint order, they deleted these two items, which was the house and the church, right? Mm -hmm. They asked us to do the church trust clause and the deed, all of these things. We did everything on the joint order. Everything, uh -huh. they deleted the two items, everything else we complied with. Once we complied and once we put the trust clause and the deed, then we received a letter from Jonathan Southpole stating that we had not complied, and he wrote an affidavit saying that Pastor Watts was not a pastor of Westside and for Bishop Green to go forward with the um, case to take our church. Party. Was this after April call? This was after the April call in 2022. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God. My God. 
lying. That's okay. We, we're just going through it all. Now, this is the case. Uh, <clears throat> Called you five minutes without the interaction. So, we, we're going to get that. So, we'll come back to Duncan Sappho's affidavit once I find it. So, once um, Sappho um, sent in the affidavit to the court, they filed that affidavit with the court. Uh-huh. But because we had already did everything in the joint order except for the transfer, we went ahead and we did the church transfer because we are complying with the joint order. So we complied with, I mean, we, we followed the rules for the transfer. We sent in the notifications. We had to send one to Bishop Green. We had to send one to Bishop Thomas because that's the jurisdiction that we transferred to, Western Georgia. We came in, we did the vote. Okay. John DeSapo then sent a letter to Bishop Lyle and said that we could not. Bishop Lyles. Lyles. Bishop, Bishop Lyles. I said it wrong. Bishop Lyles. Bishop Joel L. Lyles. General you know they're trying to come after you too. The general they want secretary to kick you out of the church. Because they tried the, the church tried to say that you stole half a million dollars, Bishop Lyles. Mm. Now, because they, they, you don't want me to tell you who sent me the paperwork now. Mm. I don't believe it. But I know how this church works. Okay, so then Bishop, um, not Bishop, then Jonathan Sappho sent a letter to um Bishop Lyle saying that we could not transfer. We had to stay in the Northwest Florida jurisdiction. Why? Until the civil case was over. But it made no sense because he also said that Pastor Watts was not the pastor, and that we were not members of the church. So we can't have to stay in the jurisdiction and also not be members of the church. Does that make sense? But who made him not a pastor? I don't know. I guess um, John the Sappho, which he doesn't have the authority to do that because within the church he is the elder, right? In order for a holy pastor to be removed, and what has to happen? Fifty-one percent of the members of that have local to church mm -hmm. have to send in documented evidence first, right? And then they they have to vote. So John the Sappho cannot like you know remove mm -hmm. Pastor Watts from um, his position, but that is what he wrote to the court, and here is his affidavit, right? There you go, brother. Wait, wait a minute. <clears throat> uh, case number, John the Sappho, 2021 CA2561. It says, one, my name is Jonathan Sappho. Yeah. Y'all, listen, you have to zoom in, zoom in. It says, on line one, my name is Jonathan Sappho. Now, don't lie and just say because it ain't got Junior on here that this is not you. Because y'all know y'all like to lie. But we in the church, so I can't, you know, I can't say what I want to say right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Pastor Watson got through praying and just thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. My name is Jonathan Sappho. I serve as the general counsel for the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. The General Assembly of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated, the presiding bishop, and the general board of the Church of God in Christ. My corporate address is 930 Mason Street, Memphis, Tennessee. You didn't put the zip code on there. Um, uh, a letter dated February the 17th, 2021, addressed to Bishop Willis C. Green, Lou Willis. And Kojic and Kenneth Watts. Why y'all didn't y'all put Bishop on his name, but y'all didn't put Pastor on his name? Because they was being disrespectful. Mm. Mm. Uh, resigned. Mm. Mm. Oh, I need to call you that in here. <laughs> y'all said Bishop. Y'all said Pastor Kenneth Watts resigned as pastor in the Church of God in Christ, attempting to dissolve the location, the local church, Westside Church of God in Christ. Now, y'all know y'all lying. He did not attempt to dissolve the church. He wanted to move our jurisdictions. Now, I'm just saying lies. Okay, wait, wait. Look, mm -hmm. let's, let me make it. I want to be factual. Mm -hmm. We don't want to not be factual. Well, all of this started because we were leaving Kojic. We did decide that we wanted to leave Kojic. But this says we dissolve the local church. 
Right, West Side Church of God in Christ to West Side Ministry. So that did that did take place, but we didn't withdraw from the church because we didn't go to the General Assembly because we did not know that. That's how all this mess got started. So, but mm -hmm. all this comes after. So this is February 17, seventeenth, twenty twenty one. This is before the April call. So what he's talking about here is before the April call, and that's how all of this got started. So we do want to be factual. That's why Bishop Thurston stated at the April call in 2022 that the church does not need to be reinstated because they never finished the process to leave because according to the Constitution. Y'all remember that video because I posted the, the video on YouTube, yes. Facebook, Instagram. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's what he's talking about there. So that part right there, I ain't going to say it's all the way factual, but most of those things that he's saying is factual. All these things are. So that's 21, that's 21, that's 22. As general counsel, uh, all right. Mm -hmm. And then if we keep going, keep going. This is the letter he wrote in 22. This is the letter that Jonathan Sapp, let's, let's back it up right here. So this says, February the, 2nd, February the 4th, 2022, letter seeking reinstatement as a member of church was received from- This is from, exhibit O, my exhibits. <laughs> from Attorney Johnson, February the 9th, 2022, a letter was received from Attorney Johnson seeking clemency. We needed neither one of those things. However, Jonathan Sappho told us that we used to do these things, and then they turned around and tried to use it against us. Mm -hmm. They, he told us that. So to where do this. is the thing where he told y'all y'all need to do this? This was a conversation. Oh. So this was this was not in writing. So the attorney see, you see we how didn't they lie? do it. I do. They told you, and then they sit up here and tell you that they didn't say it. Mm. So Attorney Johnson wrote those things at the request of um, Jonathan Sappho. So he's just going through all the information and then here he talks about the letters. But the part that's most important is number well, letter F. Immediately after my August 31st, that was after my birthday, um, 31st, 2022 letter, all settlement and mediation efforts ended. What year is it? 24. It's 24 right now. This is after 2022. April call, but we follow everything. Mm -hmm. Immediately after, this is 2022, in 2024. So why y'all asking me, is this case still open? It yes. is. Immediately after August 31st, 2022 letter, all settlements and mediation efforts ended and all terms were revoked, rescinded, and or void and Watts and all other defendants' status with the Church of God in Christ remained mm -hmm. as it was before our attempt to our attempt at mediation or settlement. So why y'all still lying to say this man's not fast? Okay. And then the other this next one and then E says, Kenneth Watts does not serve as pastor of West Side Church of God in Christ, Pensacola, Florida, or any other cultic Church of God in Christ. This is still Jonathan Sappho's affidavit. This is one of Jonathan Sappho submitted to the court. So that's all we needed from this. Bishop Green also has an affidavit where he says the same thing. So after April call, after West Side followed everything that we were asked to do, Bishop Green and Attorney Jonathan Sappho submitted an affidavit to the court saying that we had not and that Pastor Watts was not the pastor of the church and that the church decided Even that after this? After April 22. The video where every, that everybody's seeing what happened. This is what they did afterwards. Yes. So then we move along. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're that Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. It's all good. So we move forward to the letters that um, Jonathan Sappho sent to Bishop Joel Lyle that we could not transfer. Right? And then we received a letter um, we're going to fast forward to 2023, where we see the letter from Bishop Jenkins um, requesting Pastor Watts' presence at the November um, April call. But that doesn't make any sense, though, right? Because in the court, they said that he wasn't the pastor, but the church still recognizes him as the pastor, mm -hmm. and the court case is still going on, so the church wants to meet with mm -hmm. past Pastor Watts mm -hmm. to resolve the issue, so they say. But Bishop Green... And Attorney John Sappho is submitting documentation to the court stating that Pastor Watts is not the pastor. So we go to um, the April, I mean, I'm sorry, the November 2022 um, General Assembly. I went with, there with Pastor Watts. We're sitting there all day. 
we didn't talk to anybody even though they requested that we go. So we went all the way to Memphis and we talked to no one at all. I mean, we talked to Pastor Tyson and Bishop Dixon and all these pleasant people, but um, the people that requested us You didn't to talk to Bishop Shear? Mm-mm. He didn't say nothing to your daddy? Not to my knowledge. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna move along after we go to the November April call. There was a document filed in the court. I just want y'all to know that we in church right now. <laughs> when I get home. <laughs> oh. Yes, we at the church now. When okay. I get home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this is too many sheets of paper. I know. There's too I, many I dead know. trees I of know. lies. I know. So we go to April Hall in November of 2022. I'm sorry, of November of 2023. And then in February of 2024, this year, um, there was a document signed, I mean, uh, um, there was a document filed in the court by Kojic requesting a permanent injunction to put us out of our church because they said that Harry Watts was not the pastor of the church. You heard that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do something real quick. <laughs> Can we? Mm-mm. Okay. So this is the. This is the. Um, I'll let you see. This is Who the. Address? Their email address is given on that. This is the November. This should be public. I'm not going there with you. This is. <laughs> This is the um, request that we received for the um, November 2023 April call, and we and we went, and it is addressed to Bishop Green, Bishop Green versus Watt case. It says, <clears throat> please know that the Mediation and Reconciliation Committee of the General Assembly of the Church of God in Christ, Incorporated, will be meeting Thursday. Uh, November the 9th during our holy convocation. Mm. Might be like Earl Carnot, the holy. Mm. Um, to address the possible resolution of the Green versus Watts case. Mm. Uh, your presence will be helpful in this process. Therefore, we ask that you avail yourselves to meet with us on that day. The time and location will be forwarded to you via electronic means as soon as the information is available to us. Thank you in advance for your cooperation in in this very matter. And then we will all CC here, Pastor Watts. And you see the church addresses him as Pastor Kenneth Watts. And this is November 5th, 2023. After all of that information was submitted to the This Corporate was Day last year, convocation. Mm-hmm. Y'all had these people to come all the way. And I'm going to tell you something. Tampa to Pensacola is not Around the corner. Tampa to Pensacola is six hours. So Pensacola to Memphis, Tennessee is how many hours? About seven and a half. Six. You had these people <laughs> drive all the way to Memphis to not talk to the oh, my God. Okay. Okay. So then we go that, to that's one. We go to the um, April call, I mean, I'm sorry, I keep saying April, the November um, assembly. And of course, we didn't talk to anybody, so we're still going forward with the case. And so we, um, our attorney, wanted to subpoena the people to talk about what's going on in the case, right? Because we're saying that Pastor Watts is the pastor. Coach is saying he's not the pastor. They want to take the church. So we submit our list of people that we want to um, depose. And then the Church of God in Christ says that these people should not be deposed because they have no information on the case. Mm-hmm. Can we pause for a second? Mm-hmm. All of this over a grown man that does not want to be up under the leadership of someone that he does not agree with. Y'all are in court for one, two, three, almost four years now. Three. So he filed it in August of 2021. One, two, three, 2024. Four years. Well, maybe we just go 2001, two, three, four, three years. 
are we are we adults here? Like I, I just I'm trying to understand because it's like y'all trying to say y'all go in the ARC system and take this man off as a pastor, file information to say that he's not a pastor, but clearly he's a pastor. Like he's been pastoring for how many years? Thirty years. And y'all trying to say this man's not a pastor? Like, come on now. Like, let's go pull the records. Do we do we need Pastor Watts to sit up and get the invoices of him sending in his um his dues? Like, come on now. We have all of that as well. And I have oh. the badge. I have the badge. I have left it on the table, so I'll go get it if I need to. When we went in April, they went into the ARC system. What are receipts? We went into the ARC. They went into the ARC system. Someone went into the ARC system and they made Someone. Pastor Watts a lay member. Now you and I would be lay members, but Pastor I'm Watts would be oh, excuse me. I'm I did not <laughs> my bad. I'm <laughs> Praise God. Okay, I didn't know. I apologize. <laughs> okay, so they may pass a watch a lay member. Can you get that for me, Elijah? It's on the table right there. Just look through all those papers. And mm. So, and they Could took Pastor Watch money. You took his four hundred dollars. His pastoral fee. His pastoral fee. What day was this? And that says Kojic General. Kojic General Fund. What fund? Okay, we'll leave them on. Uh, seven hundred and seventy-five dollars. Another invoice. You know, another another pastor went through the same. So, That's just what they sent me to. They were just looking. Oh, <laughs> Jennifer Grant, seven hundred and seventy-five dollars. And then these are all the receipts. First name, Kenneth. Last name, Watts. Assessment description, Pastor. Pastor. Where did this come from? Georgia Western Bishop John Thompson. Thomas. Okay, Superintendent Roy Premise. This also came from the Church of God in Christ. Bishop Frank Anthony White is the financial secretary. Did y'all call Frank Anthony White? We did. We had a receipt. Paid the money, we had a receipt. I'm saying, like, they <laughs> want to say that y'all didn't do this, but he didn't. No, they're not saying that we didn't do it. Bishop Green said that it did not matter that we did. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh -huh. it didn't matter. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But for a non profit to accept your assessment and then not give you whatever you pay for or not allow you to have whatever you pay for, that would be a violation of non profit. It's a violation. I, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Can't they lose a non profit status? The General Assembly Delegate. Y'all got on here, Mr. Kenneth White Sr. Mr. Kenneth White Sr. And he was a delegate, but you can't be, because they said that we were not members at all, so Pastor Watts cannot be a delegate of the General Assembly at all, whether they have him as pastor or lay member. He can't be a delegate of the General Assembly if he is not a member of the Church of God in Christ. See, now I understand why Mother was saying that she just want to go and pull out, because all this right here, this... Y'all got the man as Mr. Kenneth Watt Sr. He's a pastor for 30 some years. And you got him down here as a lay delegate. And this, let me see the paper. This man is set up here and paid $400. Y'all received it. $775, y'all received it. $775, y'all received it. And y'all got him listed as pastor. What is this lay member stuff? What, what is it? Y'all, y'all doing wrong. Now, see, I didn't drove six hours, <laughs> calling the Pensacola now, and I, all, listen, I told y'all we get all all the facts and things. Y'all, listen, this is discouraging. This is really discouraging because y'all still got these people in court, and y'all are not trying to right the wrong. Bishop Green, as a agent of this church, well, not this church, but of Church of God in Christ. Y'all mean to tell me that y'all can't fix this? Y'all got enough money to just go ahead and shut them up. Go and run them, you know, $330,000. You'll go somewhere and sit down. I mean, in a high chair or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Kojic has no knowledge of the case. What is... This is when we requested for them to do depositions, and then they, and I only printed out one because they all say the same thing, but they all say the same thing that this individual one says, that they have no knowledge of the case. So 
they should not be deposed because they have no idea. But didn't he, what that paper that you saw, he signed? Oh, the joint order. I see that. What year was this? The year of our Lord. 2023. 2023. April call was in 2022. Dr. Sappho's letter was in 2022. It was a pink sheet of paper. All right. <clears throat> I like this type of Karen all. Bishop J. Drew Shear, the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop Sheard has no independent knowledge of the facts of the case. Prim primary reason opposing counsel is deposing Bishop Sheard is to harass and embarrass the Church of God in Christ. Opposing counsel plan to spread the, de the deposition on social media in order to intimidate Bishop Sheard and place him and the Church of God in Christ in a bad light. This is what they're saying. That we're trying this to is do. what y'all is saying. Mm -hmm. The grievance is derived from Pastor Tyson's belief that <sighs> the grievance is derived from Pastor Tyson's belief that his mother and father were mistreated by Church of God in Christ and suffered great loss by the uh, reputation and finance. Y'all said Bishop Shear did not have no independent knowledge. Right, so they said that about all of them. Bishop Simpson, Bishop uh, Or when this, was, uh, this was this was uh twenty twenty three. This was signed and effective April sixth, twenty twenty two. Whose signature is this? Mm -hmm. Well it says Bishop J. Drew Shear, presiding bishop. Y'all around there signing Bishop Shear uh, signature and stuff? Is that what's going on? Okay, so Bishop Shear obviously knew what was going on. Again, lie has been proven. Okay, what's next? I want to keep this right here on the side so I can show his signature since they said he had no knowledge of what was going on. Okay, so that was... Since so y'all said we want to make the church look bad, but y'all signing stuff, and y'all still got these folks in court, and you suing this woman and her husband, and the man was in the hospital. Are y'all for real? And they um, keeping the husband getting their money. The church needs to pay the host their money because these people have been living in the host house for almost two two, two years. years because Coach claimed ownership to the house, even though. We have evidence, emails. I don't have them with me, but I'll send them to you if you want them. From Jonathan Sappho saying that he knows that Kojic has no authority, I'll basically, and I'm para paraphrasing of the of the house. But yet, Bishop Green went to the people's house because I've told the story. So, stuff, can you come here, please? <laughs> I shall. Elijah, if you need to pull the camera back, you can. Now, Sister Huff, uh, missionary mother, um, this is your name, right? That is correct. Frankie Lee Huff. That's correct. Okay, so they're suing y'all on here. And again, if they say that y'all have no, that Bishop Sheard had no knowledge of this, this is, again, what is this? Uh, what's 10? That's November. October. October 17, 2023. He obviously knew all about this way back when mm -hmm. in 2022, actually 2021. Do we have 2021 paperwork? Um, we don't. The only thing that we have from the court in 2021 is the initial um, filing of the lawsuit and maybe some um, affidavits from Bishop Green. So, but to be factual, though, Bishop Green did state in his deposition that that was not that Bishop Shea did not sign that. That's what Bishop Green said in the deposition. I don't know if that's true, but that's what he said. So we want to make sure we keep everything factual. We don't want to tell no lies. They said he said he Bishop Green Bishop Green uh -huh. said uh -huh. that J. Drew Shear uh -huh. did not sign this. Uh -huh. but who signed it? I don't know. So you mean tell me y'all signing stuff and the bishop? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Sister Hall. Yes, sir. 
So you're on this case. Now, can you, to your recollection, um, the property, what's the address of the property that you own? 1100 West Young Street. Okay. Um, and what happened with Bishop Green? Uh, Bishop Green said, um, did a house. Mr. Green, Bishop uh, Green. Uh, <laughs> Bishop Green said a house, um, we did everything wrong. If we wasn't supposed to be rented it out uh, to, to anyone because that's their that's their building. Is who building? Uh, uh, Church of God in Christ property. Did, did Church of God in Christ come fix anything? Not nothing. Did Church of God in Christ come cut the grass? Not anything. Did Church of God in Christ get the roof fixed? No. Did... And that roof was over $10,000. Hmm. Did Church of God in Christ uh, put... What have you had to do to that property? We had to do a lot. We had to do a whole lot to that property. A whole lot. Beside the renovation. Oh my, yeah, beside the renovation, yes. Did you my see money. any money from Church of God in Christ or Bishop Green? No money from Church of God in Christ nor from Bishop Green. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk. You're welcome. So, this signature. We don't even know if that's legit now. But it's his signature. Okay. Since y'all saying that we want to, where is it one? We want to embarrass the church. Y'all, we want to harass the church. Uh, well, not we. Y'all saying Moses Tyson. And uh, as far as the social media, y'all talk about me. So now I take offense because this is paperwork that y'all submitted. This mound of trees that's on this desk, <laughs> this is paperwork from the Church of God in Christ office in with y'all entities and agents. What's next? Because I got the signatures in my head. So we move forward to this year, right? Mm -hmm. And in February, February of 2024, 20, this is where the Church of God of Christ re requested a um, judgment. And they said that... Um, Why they request a judgment? Because they wanted the church. Because they said that Pastor Watson... They wanted that church? They wanted the, that church, this church, and the Hubs house. So they were, this was on February the first of this of this year. But well, I thought it was all dissolved. <laughs> not so. So then here he says that Pastor Watts is not the pastor of the church. In twenty twenty now they just twenty four. They just went to April Call. And yes. they said mm -hmm. that everything was well and they made them hug like little children. Because I got the video. Y'all made them hug and you know, shake hands. They didn't make them, though. Pastor Watts hugged Bishop Green. They didn't make them hug. Pastor Watts is, you know, he's trying to do the right thing. Right. Confusion, so they didn't make them, but Pastor Watts did. He did hug Bishop Green, but wasn't Bishop Green up there saying that he loved everyone? But you know what Bishop Green also said? <laughs> he wants an apology. Okay, we're not going to go there, though, because we are in the church. And you're going to get me in trouble if Pastor Watts see the video and then say, have me saying something ugly in the church now. I'm telling you, the man said, <laughs> I got, the man said mm -hmm. he deserves an apology. He needs an apology. He did say that. Because he feel like he was wrong. Right, but he was not. But he was the one who started all this. Right. So in February 1st, 2024, this year, Coach said it is undisputed that plaintiffs have, plaintiffs as Coach have determined that Defendants Westside are not current members, officers, and plaintiffs' church coding. And all attempts between parties to this complaint to mediate the issues in the complaint uh, are done. And then it gives the affidavit of for them to see Sappho's affidavit and Green's affidavit where they explain that Pastor Watts um, and none of us are members of the Church of God in Christ. So this is February 1st. But then we move along. Who's still to, in the back? Oh, this is just all the. Violence. So it's just like the attack. So y'all are not members of the Church of God in Christ, mm -hmm. but Pastor Watts has been paying uh -huh. 
fees uh -huh, and assessments, uh -huh. and y'all took them. Uh -huh. But then y'all say in January, February, this is this year, that this man is not a member at all. Well, he has his badge, a delegate. Y'all made this man get a new badge. Y'all didn't even put past on here. Y'all put lay member. And then you turn around in a, in a filing this year, say that nobody in this church is a member of the Church of God in Christ. Um, what is this check for? I don't know. Ties for September. What is it? So this is 2020. I don't know what this is. This is their this is their exhibits too. I didn't read their look at their exhibits because you know all this stuff is just is made up. So um, this is their exhibits for whatever they're explaining to the judge in here. So then they put some exhibits in here to show whatever it is that they're talking about. Oh, payments that we made. Oh, payments that they made to the jurisdiction. Uh huh. Let me hold on. Let me let me see. Um. So this is payments that they have made to the jurisdiction, mm -hmm. West Side Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, this is the church's tithe. Um, here's another one. Um, it's a tithe payment for three hundred dollars. The church paid another tithe for nine hundred and sixty-eight dollars and fifty cents. Y'all keep records of this, still, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to keep records. But all this is before. This is before, before the incident. Yes. But y'all said this man. Ooh. <laughs> y'all. Y'all said this man is not a pastor, mm -hmm. and none of these folks are not affiliated with the Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. But they have clear records mm -hmm. of payments that they have paid to the jurisdiction, uh, supportive offerings, uh, tithe to the ministry and everything like that. And y'all say that these people are not affiliated um, with the church. Now, also, you say that they're not affiliated, but you have Pastor Watts on the Church of God in Christ, uh, Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Florida Northwest. You have him listed on here as Pastor Kenneth Watts. And you also got Missionary Margaret Watts on here. So if they ain't got no affiliation, they y'all put this stuff in the court record. So I think that Bishop Green was or Attorney Gant, whoever did this, was trying to show that we were because this is before the case, and then now they're claiming that we're. I don't think we're not what he was doing. Oh, obviously, but because this proves that they are that you all are members of the church, and him and his ignorance put stuff in the documentation. Mm -hmm. That clearly show that mm -hmm. y'all are members and y'all been paying since mm -hmm. God knows when, mm -hmm. since Jesus was here. Mm -hmm. we, have a paper trail. we have to back back up though because I forgot to um, after the um, April twenty two um, paper call meeting where Bishop Thompson made the statement, mm -hmm. and then the orders that you just read where they took the things off the um, joint order mm -hmm. and we complied, and then they said that we were not members. We went to the November. Um, assembly, Mr. Watts. They filed, Kojic filed the minutes of the General Assembly because we reported what happened. So we basically came back and said um, we thought we were out, but we're not out. Bishop Thurston made the statement. Bishop she had prayed the prayer of restoration. Mm -hmm. Bishop Green and Pastor Watts Which talked we do it out. The video. We do everything is all settled. Let's move forward. Uh -huh. So then they come back and they say no, that is not true. And then they submit the General Assembly minutes to the court that leaves out. The incident between, or the um, event that happened between Pastor Watts, Bishop Sheard, and Bishop Green. That is, and this is all of this is in Scammy County Court. You can go and read it for yourself. We're not making any of these things up. So I want to make sure I pointed that pointed that out. Okay, so now we're in uh, February of 2022. Move forward. We received several letters from um, Kojic requesting Pastor Watts's presence to discuss, um, I don't know. We were, <laughs> I don't,
don't know because we, uh, Pastor Tyson went with, so myself, Pastor Watts, and Pastor Tyson went to um, this last April call of 2024 mm -hmm. where um, we were not there to discuss the case. The chairman of the committee um, confirmed that we were not there to discuss the case, but we did meet and talk with them um, about the situation within the church. I believe I have the video. Mm. Also heard uh, perhaps an apology from him to me since I was the uh, intended victim of a lot of what was said. But I know love is what it says and not what it does. I love this young man, love him uh, to heart. And I know that the Church of God in Christ is filled with grace and mercy. 52 years ago, last month, the Church of God in Christ found me as a wayward 15 year old headed for trouble, reclaimed my life and made me who I am today. And I give this church credit for all that it means to me. I love this church and I love the leadership opportunity that I've been given. And it uh, hurt me to an extent that we carried this out so far to the point where social media was deriding our church and saying all these negative things about us. I believe then when I came in. We wouldn't even be talking about this had he not brought his right. self Agreed. here. Agreed. Start, okay. Agreed. I believe today, I will believe forever that the church of God in Christ is the greatest church on the face of the earth. <laughs> Pastor oh. Kenneth Watts can tell you. Oh. Was that Bishop Green addressing him as Pastor? Oh, Pastor Kenneth Watts. From him to me since I was the intended big church and then they're going to eventually recommend new language or at least further define it uh, some different things that would uh, this is Jonathan Sappho talking uh, uh, define things like uh, a founding pastor and delineate different rules for that and that's been something that a lot of people have long uh, wished for and then finally um, the bishops in this church will receive more specific guidance in a form of a defined process to address jurisdictional issues that involve the trust clause. Tonight, we are going to restore, biblically restore, one of our brothers to the brotherhood. They was talking about Pastor Kenneth Watts. Mm -hmm. Issue, I never had an issue with him over the 10 years that I served him as a jurisdictional bishop never had a problem, didn't even know he was interested in leaving or transferring out of our jurisdiction. The first letter that I sent to him uh, when I got his request from his attorney was one of thanksgiving. Thank you for all of the great service that you gave to our church. Bishop, and I simply Bishop asked him. Green. Bishop Green, Bishop Green, this is not the end of. This is Bishop Lemuel Thurston addressing Bishop Green. Yes. Okay, let me just say thank you there. Let me tell you something though, Bishop. You've got a long story to tell, and we need to hear all of it, but we just won't hear it all tonight. Thank you, but here's your conclusion. They hug. They hug. Bishop Pastor Watts initiated the hug. Because what? He never fully left. He didn't complete the process. Mm -hmm. And so it's 2024, we're still here. Because in the court policy, Bishop Green basically states that when Bishop Thurston made the statement that the church uh, never fully left, that Bishop Thurston wasn't not talking about Pastor Watts. He was talking about the church. But I don't know how a church can initiate it because the church is a building. So a church can't initiate the process. The people are the church. So the bishop was talking about us, the people, Pastor Watts. Mm -hmm. But in the court policy, that's not what it says. It says that. Uh, you'll read it. Okay, so this is also another affidavit where uh, 2023, the bishop and the secretary said that Pastor Watts was not the pastor, but they went in and changed the information in the art system. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. That would be 
Okay. okay. Mm. <laughs> I hear. <laughs> My name is Cassandra L. James Robertson. I am over 18 years of age. Uh, what is this? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Now, who is, who is Cassandra? Uh, she is the corporate secretary and jurisdiction, jurisdictional secretary for Florida Northwest. So she's Bishop Green's um, jurisdictional secretary. So, Sister Cassandra, L. James Robinson, you sat here in these court documents, and y'all, and you got your signature right here too, Sandra Ray Rock. Hmm? Wait, that's Sharon. That, it's right here, Cassandra James Robinson. You sat here in these court documents and said that Bishop Pastor, I mean, sorry, Pastor Watts is not a pastor on, on uh, line six based on the church of god in christ incorporated official records as found in church of god in christ arc magistrate pro i attest the following kenneth watts is not a pastor of west side church of god in christ in pensacola florida so where is he in orlando florida <laughs> tampa florida miami florida St. Pete, Florida. Where you live at? In Pensacola, Florida. You live in Pe where the church at? Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. Mother, where you live at? Pensacola, Florida. So, so where you live at? Pensacola, Florida. Okay. All these church members are in Pensacola, Florida, at West Side Ministries Inc. Where the pastor is, Pastor Kenneth. Watts, and you, Cassandra, am I saying the name right? Because I want to say, I don't know who that is. Cassandra, right? I believe so. Cassandra L. James Robinson. You lied. I'm going to say you lied because you lied. This man is the pastor of this church, and y'all got in the paperwork, in this affidavit, on line six, based upon Church of God in Christ official records. That this man is what well, is not the pastor. So if he the pastor of Westside Church of God in Christ, he the pastor of Westside Ministries Incorporated. Okay. Um, Kenneth Watts is not the pastor of Westside. Kenneth Watts is not the pastor of Westside Church of God in Christ in Pensacola. Kenneth Watts is not the pastor of Westside Ministries Incorporated in Pensacola, Florida. Kenneth Watts' letter of intent to transfer was received 9-18-22. So if he ain't the pastor, how is he trying to transfer up church? And how is it in the ARC system? Voting results letter was received 10-25-2022 and the data submitted in the ARC 11-8-2022. Could not submit data because Kenneth Watts is not listed as pastor as of 11 8 2022. Why? So let's just say this though, because I don't know this lady, I don't know who she is I don't personally. Hear. Right, I understand. But what she's saying is that in the art systems, which means that somebody went into the art system to remove Pastor Watts, so we don't want to necessarily say that. She lied because if she goes into the art system and somebody, somebody, we ain't gonna call nobody's name, but somebody took him out. And added themselves when I'm she looks it. in there. You're not responsible. I'm going to say it. Okay. So. <laughs> Listen, we got enough lawsuits flying around and you know Bishop Green like to sue. So we don't want you to. I didn't, I didn't implement him. I just basically <laughs> said it. I basically said it. Mm -hmm. If she is the secretary. Right. For. Ecclesiastical jurisdiction of Florida Northwest Church of God in Christ. Who gave the orders? Because I'm confused. 
So she, she could just be saying what she's actually seen, but what that means is that somebody went in mm -hmm. and took him out. So we don't want to say Ms. Robinson is not being factual because Pastor Watts can get into the art system to see this. Somebody see, locked him out. Is her name somewhere else in these documentations? I want to yes, say. Oh, she a witness. Mm -hmm. Is she a witness for the Lord? That's... Okay, so this is Bishop Haynes. Witness will see that you have come testify for him. And she's back in Cassandra. Maybe it's Cassandra. Cassandra. Mm, she on the witness list. Okay, I can't do I can't do that because I was gonna say something. <laughs> but in the article says active, this is Pastor Watts account that we can't log into. But um he's active, his status is active. His profile is transferred because he did initiate the process to transfer, but somebody blocked it and then took him out of the system. Sounds just like when they did the voting for presiding bishop, but I don't really Okay, we not, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that over here at Westside now. We ain't gonna be in that mess with you, okay? <laughs> this is Bishop Green's witness list. Mm -hmm. You wanna read it? And too many names. Mm -hmm. These these are his people. That was gonna testify. That was gonna testify mm -hmm. against y'all. Uh-huh. Catherine Williams, Bernard Bryant, Superintendent Anthony Anderson. Cassandra L. James Robinson and Andrew McGraw and Dolores Wiggins. Mm -hmm. These the tenants. Those are the tenants. The tenants. That's living in the sister house, sister mm -hmm. health house for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna fast forward mm -hmm. to this April call. We went talked to Dr. Jenkins, Bishop Jenkins, excuse me, and um, the committee not about the case and we have evidence that it was not about the case mm -hmm. fast forward and then attorney jonathan saffold stood before the people of god in mason temple and told them that they were never going to take pastor watts's church but we have all this documentation that says give us 51 marshall lane 1100 young street and uh 2313 g street okay so then we get another order from the church, which is which is the same exact joint order that we got in 2022. Let me find that for you. <laughs> what do you, do you need to see it? Mm -mm. Okay, so we got another joint order. Mm -mm. Same exact thing that we already had, that we already complied with. Mm -mm. They resend it. Mm -mm. But this time it's signed by Jonathan Saffold. And not Bishop Shield. Not Bishop Shield. Mm, so this this is the order right here you're talking about. Yeah, but we got another one, a 2024 one. With the same wording. Uh huh. So, so the things that were taken out on the letters that we. So y'all did copy and paste. Right. The things that were taken out are not in the new order because they were already taken out. Even though they said we didn't comply, we did comply. They sent out the new order. Oh, and here it is right here. I have a question. Mm hmm. What is all this comply stuff? Because all of these papers, <laughs> all of this, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. all of these papers to say what? That he ain't the pastor? But clearly they got paperwork in here. Mm -hmm. that saying that he is the pastor. That say that he is the pastor. From the Church of God in Christ. From the Church of God in Christ. From the Board of Bishops. From the Board of Bishops. And the then y'all sit up and flip flop around and say, y'all got folks over here lying in paperwork, with the yellow, yellow paperwork, got folks over here lying like Cassandra, saying that he ain't the pastor, and you being the secretary of the church for God knows how long, and you up here signed your name on this paperwork to uh, go along with this lie. Now, y'all supposed to be saying something about baptized people, the person given to the Holy Ghost people. Y'all lied on court documentation. Sister Cassandra, missionary, and who else? The, the list of constituents. Y'all even got the man in the ARC system right here with multiple his with his picture. <laughs> what is. And y'all got. Y'all done dug a hole for y'all self. Yes, Credential assessment history. God is. Oh, God is a white <laughs> worker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's right here. Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh, my God. It's right here. <laughs> we can go all the way back to 2010. We can. $400. Uh -huh. 2011, $400. 2012, $400. 2013, $400. 2014, $400. 15, $400. 16, $400. 17, $400. 18, $400. Now, when was he not a pastor? And this was for pastor. It's a pastor right here. This is from the ark powered by, what does it say? I can't read that. It's real small. Powered by some with a line on a pro. And it said an arc right there. That's what it said, arc right there. First of all, all the way from 2010, you got some pages to this? All the way from 2010 to 2023, y'all have this man listed as pastor. How in the heck? I thought I was going to say something else. How in the heck y'all have this man as not a pastor and clearly his credential assessments I ain't going to say y'all need to be sued, but y'all need y'all butt whooped. This is wrong. This we're not going to say they need to be sued, but we're going to say that a fraud needs to be filed. Fraud? Uh -huh. Fraud. 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 Mm -hmm. fraud. Okay, so now we now we passed the general assembly. We got the joint order. Same thing that we already had. Same exact thing. That Bishop Sheard signed. Mm -hmm, but now Jonathan Sappho has signed. Now mm -hmm. Jonathan Sappho. Let me see something. No, his signature ain't on this one. Try and find your signature, John Stapo. <laughs> okay, this is one from Mediation and Reconciliation Committee, uh, February the 7th, 2024. Uh, electronically signed by Frederick D. Jenkins, Bishop. Um, oh, let me see. Uh, and also, this is Dear Bishop Thurston. This was sent, this is from Bishop Green. Oh, October. Say that one more time. This is the letter from Bishop Green that he sent to um, Bishop Thurston requesting um, that we meet in November when we went up there. We didn't, but that's his letter that he sent in, he made the request to take it back to the General Assembly, even though he told the court that everything that we told them did not happen. So he took it back to the court, that he to the same committee that he said did not have, and in the court documents that we have, that they said that the same committee had no authority within the church, and the documentation that we submitted, the 2022 um, committee report, should be considered hearsay. And then Bishop Green writes his letter to the same committee that has no power or authority. According to him, he writes his letter to them to ask if they could take another look because he had submitted all of these um, documents to the court that were fraudulent. So the hole is really, 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 really deep now. Yeah, it's really deep. You got papers here with Bishop Shear's signature on it saying that he owed people and um, Jonathan Sappho signed that. Uh, Frederick Jenkins signed a reconciliation and mediation. Willie C. Green signed this letter of him lying. It's his signature right there. Right there. So if y'all got any questions, there is a stack. And this stuff is in the Scambia County, right? The Scambia County. But we have to, I, I don't, we got to make sure we point this out there. No, no, no. Um, I was just saying like, oh, yes, a Scambia all of County, these documents. Um, clerk of court, you can find all this information. All public records. Jesus. Even the General Assembly minutes from 2022. What else we can look at? Okay, so after we received this um, reconciliation from Kojic, they submitted June the 14th, 2024, a request to the court that um, to make Westside dismiss their counterclaim against the church because now they're saying that we are Kojic. But well, wait. <laughs> Oh. So they dug this really deep hole, submitted all of this fraudulent information to the court, mm -hmm. and created this paper trail of this mm -hmm. scam, right? And so I guess they assume that if now they say, okay, yeah, 
the reconciliation committee that we met with in 2024 solved the issue. But I can testify to the fact that when I spoke to Dr. Jenkins personally, we agreed upon that we were not discussing this case that they have submitted to the court that we did discuss and come to a resolution, which we did not. I was there, Pastor Watts was there, Pastor Tyson was there, Bishop Green was there, and then the committee members were also there. So I know all the people got it on live. These folks went to the thing too? Not not our members, but there was a committee. I don't know, I don't I don't know the people, but there were a committee, so Oh, Green's people. There was a committee. Oh, they got a committee for reconciliation. And Dr. Jenkins is the chairman of that committee, and there were some other people in there as well. So they all were in there. They can all testify to the fact that we were not to discuss the civil case before the court. But we have now court documentation to say that the court has no jurisdiction because we mediated in April, which we did not. Okay, more lies. We were not even there when Duncan Sappho stood before the people of God in Mason Temple and said that they were never going to take the church. More lies. Mm -hmm. And y'all said that there are churches. This is. <laughs> this was last month. Last month they submitted this mm -hmm. one. January, February, March, April, May, June. So in February of this year, they said that we had no credentials. Pastor Watson, where is it? Where is it? Where is it at? And then in June, now he's passed again. And now they're trying to get the court to force us to do whatever the documents are saying, it's, it's which so, we already it's did. So, what you we had it? Oh, you had it. So, yeah. Oh, it's over here? Uh -huh. Okay. This. One way he said he was not the pastor. Oh, that's in all of them. Maybe we could just pick one. <laughs> we could just pick one of these. Um. Oh, no, that's what the lady lied. Oh, that's what Sister Woman of God lied. Okay, it's wait. Right here, too, it says, however, defendants are not members of Kojic and do not represent a local Kojic church, according to Kojic, who determines who's, mem who's the members. Is it this? Well, Sister. Oh, right here. And this was last year, 2023. Y'all said that Pastor Watts was not the pastor, but then y'all filed paperwork to say he is the pastor, and y'all want him to drop, y'all want them to drop their lawsuit. The countersuit. The countersuit. But y'all ain't dropped y'all suit. Mm. Who else be a suit in that? Okay, so in the church case, Kojic, the Church of God in Christ, is suing Pastor Watts, um, the ministry. And Deacon Sister Huff. Huff. And Sister Huff, yes. And Brother Huff just got, I mean, uh, Deacon Huff just got in the hospital. Mm -hmm. How he being sued? Well, mm -hmm. you have to ask Kojic <laughs> because they are the ones that suing them. But then Bishop Green is also suing, and I have that somewhere. Bishop Green is suing me for defamation. He's suing Pastor Watts for defamation. He's suing Sister Huff for defamation. Mm -hmm. Deacon Huff for defamation. Attorney Johnson for defamation. Mm -hmm. Pastor Tyson for defamation. Mm -hmm. Well... <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, how did y'all defame him? I'm not sure. Oh, I know how he said I defamed him. So, because attorney Jonathan Sappho Jr. wrote that affidavit where he lied. Yeah. Tyson told me not to say lie. Lied. When he, Pastor Tyson told me not to say lie. Li I Pastor lied. Tyson, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking it back. When he submitted fraudulent information to the court, False. he's an officer of the court, which lied. means perjury. And fraud upon the court. And so I drafted a letter that I'm going to send in to the Minnesota bar where he's licensed. And Bishop oh, he's Green. Licensed in Minnesota. He's licensed in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he lived in Minnesota. He doesn't. He lives in Wisconsin. Hmm. You got to go look that up. I'm not going to go there. Anyway, um, <laughs> Bishop Green got a copy of that draft. And because he's in that draft, his name is in the draft that says that um, uh, Jonathan Sappho submitted the fraudulent affidavit. To help him, Bishop Green is suing me for that and for a text message that says that um, the Church of God in Christ um, has committed fraud or whatever I said on the text message. He submitted that to the court as well. So the draft that I accused um, Justin Sappho of submitting the fraudulent affidavit is now submitted in the court with a text this message. This is fraudulent. It is. 
So that's what he accused me of committing fraud. I mean, defamation against him. Pastor Watts said he don't even have anything that Pastor Watts supposedly said about him in his case. Oh, Pastor just... Watts hadn't said anything. He just named him. Deacon Ho, Sister Ho. So I don't know. I I don't know how they have defamed him, but that is what Sister he's claiming. Have you said anything about his name? I haven't said nothing about. It. I I know he's not a true man of God. I know that. Maybe that's the defamation. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. So now here we we're, now we're here. We're current. We're current, we're caught up, we're waiting on the court to lift the stay, and they're asking that we... Um, How much are y'all in debt with this? We are almost up to $300,000. Are you serious? Not quite three, but almost three. But once he replies, we might be at three. And that's just for one attorney, and we have two. And the sister Huff and Deacon Huff need their money for their house. Mm -hmm. They need their rent money. Yeah, we need it for, for almost two oh, years. Yeah. And up to date right now for the tenants, and this just only just the um just for the rent, nineteen thousand two hundred dollars. That's just the rent. That's, that's not the door rent. that's missing. That has a that's blanket on the, hanging on, on the it. back. I saw okay. that. I did. I, matter of fact, <laughs> and we don't know what it looks like inside the house that they went in and remodeled, right? Go to yeah, and remodel yeah, the inside, yeah. yes. Um, Do you have pictures of it uh, before before they moved in? Um, I I don't know what I'd do with them, but we did. But I have to look for them. I don't know what I'd do. Oh, it was so nice. It was really. It looked good. Oh, they cleaned up the yard a little bit. They didn't like that little bit. <laughs> Got a pit bull in the front. <laughs> you, 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 are you sure you took the right picture? Because <laughs> the day when we passed by the other break, everything is very high and. Oh, no, they cut the grass. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they did cut the grass. They did? Okay. <laughs> yeah, they cut the grass. Yeah, I don't know where I didn't say it wasn't cut. Oh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, wait a minute, hold on. The, the uh, laundry uh, Room, the door they bent got, off of that. Yeah, they they, they got a, like a, a, a blanket or something. There's a sheet or something up there, yeah. tapestry. Yeah, yeah, tapestry. And they got stuff all up under the, the carport. Yeah. My Lord, today. They got a pit bull on the front stoop. They got weeds all on the fence. They did cut the yard, though. <sighs> Where we at? Uh, so, so we're caught up with the court case. We're waiting on one of the judge to lift the stay so we could um, reply to this. Um, so wh what is the judge saying about all this? Well, the judge has not really said much about the church case yet because we've been going back and forth. They submit a document um, every other day, it seems like. But so all of the, this, this stack right here is all of the documents that have been submitted to the court just on the church case mm -hmm. but the defamation case they they have a hearing schedule in october oh my god and then i have a hearing no they have a jury trial set in october for the defamation case which is still going to bring this whole church case into the defamation case so bishop green has dug a very very big hole for for the church of god in christ and i just hope that they have the um wisdom to make the Right decision because they did tell us in the um, MRC report that Bishop Green would not be, um, they're not going to do anything to him because he felt like he was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. That they're not going to uh, discipline Bishop Green because he believed that he was doing the right thing. So let me go and read it because I don't want to make it up. Let me find it. So Bishop Green and the Church of God in Christ have submitted all of this paperwork mm -hmm. and they don't believe that he was doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, so number nine cheese. of the MRC report says the jurisdictional bishop shall receive neither condemnation, condemnation or reprimand for his actions in this case as he was doing what he believed was his just duty. No further evidence was presented to this committee that demonstrated that at any time the jurisdictional bishop or the Church of God in Christ was in, sorry, the 
jurisdictional bishop or the Church of God in Christ was attempting to take the local church property away from the pastor or the congregation. And this came from the Mediation Committee, April 2024, the General Assembly report. Amen. Oh, and let me also say this. When the General Assembly voted, they were not given all of the information. And remember that Jonathan Sapphel told them that they were never going to take our church. But we have all this documentation to show that Bishop Green and Jonathan Sappho were um, attempting to steal control of, of our properties and the Hubs mm -hmm. um, house. <sighs> Any final words? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, is, I, this, is this it? This 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 the end of it, right? This is the end. Yes, these these documents right here that we got. Oh no! Oh, Bishop Green's affidavit is in there. Let me see it. Let's see some of the affidavit. It's right back here. And y'all worried about me on social media? <laughs> wow! Oh, wow. Jesus! Lord have mercy, Jesus! <laughs> Elijah, where we at? Time wise. I can't chop this up. It's live? No. Oh, what? No, it's recorded. <laughs> okay. So on April you see 9th, the right In the right corner, the top right corner. You mean what time is it? No, no, no. I was asking, like, what, what, how, how long is the video so far? Yeah, it's called. Let me see. So on April 9, 2024, I, this is Bishop Green's affidavit that he submitted um, to the court. On April 9, 2024, I, along with Kent Watts, Felicia Watts Kidd, and Moses Tyson met with the Mediation Reconciliation Committee in an effort to mediate all issues in case number 2021-CA002561, which is false because we were not there to discuss the mm -hmm. civil case. And then he goes on to say that um, the General Assembly voted and approved the findings Did of they? the committee, and they adopted a new law. The adopted wow. law required, wow. Wow. among other things, that the three pieces of the property stay with us. So they did say that they did vote that the property stays with us. But then they have something in here that if Pastor Watts does not, uh, if everybody doesn't, comply then they can be disciplined by the church what is the comply what do they want y'all to comply with i guess they want us to drop our counter suit against the church for abusing for abusing pastor watts and sister huff and deacon huff and the members of west side so i don't i don't know <sighs> who is the judge judge um broderson but she'll she'll know and there's gonna be a, a, a federal complaint that's in the process right now of being filed so all of this is going to um i just hope that cody does the right thing that's that's my final words that i hope i pray that cody does the right thing because bishop green still has two more cases you said what bishop green still has two more cases that are uh -uh. centered uh -uh. around uh -uh. you said you hope what i hope that cody I mean, I understand what you're saying. I hope that Cody does the right thing. They have not done the right thing so far. Oh, just pause. You see all this paperwork? I do. But maybe they'll fast and pray. You know they like to fast and pray. So maybe they'll go on a, a, a fast and they'll pray in the Lord to direct them. Because when God is with you like he was with Pastor Watts, there's yes. going to be some trouble coming to the people that, that mishandled him. I'm telling you. And it's coming. And we hate, to see the, we hate to see the Cody bishops on CNN and Fox News. For fraud and conspiracy to commit fraud Ooh. and things like that. We don't want that to happen. Ooh. West Side don't want that to happen. West Side though. <laughs> Hold it right here. Reporting live. <laughs> we want the church to do the right thing. We want the church to be whole. They is not whole. they is not trying to do I'm not gonna say they're not gonna do the right thing, but they, they are have not, not done the right thing so they far. have not been doing the right thing. Right. Right, and this and last attempt that they just did was to try to Y'all talking out. about this ain't Bishop Shear's signature, and then if that's not his signature, that's fraud. <sighs> Cody, please do the right thing, because Bishop Green has two defamation cases that are centered around this church case, 
So even when this case is dismissed, if Bishop Green does not dismiss his is this a cases, joke? no, this is real life. If he does not dismiss his cases, all of the fraudulent documentation that has been submitted in this main case is going to be also discussed and brought into the defamation cases because he is claiming defamation based on these um, untruths, <laughs> this dishonesty that he has submitted and documented to the court. Mm -hmm. So we have three years worth of documented evidence. This is when we... Oh, let me let me discuss this real quick. So there were charges filed against Bishop Green by four pastors, and I'm not going to call their name because I don't know if they want to, four pastors that used to be in the Northwest Florida jurisdiction, which have transferred. Mm -hmm. And the Board of Bishops um, Grievance Committee found that Bishop Green should go stay in trial because he violated some things. They decided that he didn't have to do that after mm -hmm. this. So then some more charges were filed against Bishop Green by two more pastors neither of Northwest Florida jurisdiction. They found him guilty in those as well, and then they decided that he was not going to stand trial. And then after the April call 22, we reported Bishop Green to the Board of Bishops, and they again found that he violated the things that we say he had violated, but then after that, they came back and said that he was not going to have to stand trial. So that's what you're seeing right there. You're seeing the correspondence between... Uh-huh. Don't call that name, though. We ain't gonna call nobody name, but but they are they are very much aware that um, Bishop Green has been doing all of these things, but they have made the decision not to um, discipline him for whatever mm. that reason is. But you see, in all of these documentation that has the church seal on it, the board of bishop seal on it, mm. they all address Pastor Watts as Pastor Kenneth Watts, Pastor Kenneth Watts, Pastor Kenneth Watts, Pastor Kenneth Watts, even though in the court, Bishop Green and Jonathan Sappho and Frederick Gant, their attorney, is saying that. He is not, or he was not. Now they're saying that he is again, as of last month. This is a circle of foolishness. It is. So, can I can I ask a question, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Bishop? So, from what I'm hearing right now, everything that was brought up on Mr. Green, yes, and it. Uh, the, the big church cheers nothing happened nothing happened they didn't do anything well this is with the board of bishops so I, I'm not going to say sheared bishop sheared um, but, 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 I'm just, I just want to be shears, factual I was just talking about the big oh, church the, right the so big this so the all this church, stuff goes people. to the board of bishops right grievance committee okay. so all the charges three sets of charges have been sent to them mm -hmm. regarding um, Bishop Green and his violations as a bishop and they 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 found that he violated in uh -huh. all three yeah but, but then they, they said no back on it Right, then they said right. they're not going to discipline him. Yes. So now with all of that said and done, they're not going to discipline him? So they just let me know then they're going to continue let him do what he going to do. But we already know God got this. God got us. But they just let me know from what I'm hearing, they, the Board of Bishops, is going to continue to let him do what he do. So it appears when they let him go, when they don't discipline him, it makes it appear as if, and I say appear, it makes it appear as if the church was in compliance, that they agreed with. Because if you can't say, hey, you wrong, you're doing okay, wrong, okay. you're going to stop you from doing that, mm -hmm. and we're just going to let you get away with doing mm -hmm. it, that means that we had to have been in compliance, or maybe we told you something on the in behind the door that we hadn't said in public, and that's why we're going to let you get away with it. I don't know. That doesn't really matter, because God got us, and God going to get them. Oh, that's my yes. Okay. <clears throat> I want to say thank you all so much for. Oh, so, I'm sorry. I got one more thing to say. I, I apologize. I have to. Make... <laughs> I, I apologize. Okay, so I want to make sure that all of the Church of God in Christ churches recognize that you own your local church. Say it is your time. church property. You own your local church. The Church of God in Christ does not. The Church of God in Christ does not own your local church. They don't pay your mortgage. They don't pay your insurance. They don't keep. They don't maintenance. They don't do anything at all. You own your local church. So the Church of God in Christ cannot, with the trust clause, just come in and snatch up your property. Do not allow them to do that. Pastor Tyson has been teaching us that the Board of Trustees has control 
of that property for that local sure. ministry. So that local ministry owns their their property. Kojic does not own the property. <laughs> so just like with the old church over there, the original members, some of the original members are still here. Is is our church. Sister Huff is an original member. Mm -hmm. Deacon Huff is an original member. Mm -hmm. Mother Thomas is an original member of that church. They are the people that invested in the church. The church belongs to Westside, to us, mm -hmm. not to the Church of God in Christ. So please remember that. And Pastor Tyson will be more than happy. Sorry, Pastor Tyson. Pastor Tyson will be more than happy to educate you on mm -hmm. your rights. And I hope that the Church of God in Christ will educate the people on the trust clause and <laughs> the trust clause and their rights and please stop trying to take property from your brothers and your sisters we are a family and we're supposed to be a family in Christ and we are a, we are a, a family so we should not be stealing from from one another that's my final I'm sorry I'm done so in my in my closing statement that is this they have filed paperwork over and over again for the past three years, mm -hmm. and they have reneged. They have filed falsified statements. I'm saying this. They ain't saying this. They have filed falsified statements to cover their tracks, and I'm not even sure if the judge has even seen any of all this because a good attorney, you know, I'm saying a good attorney would have said, how y'all doing this? You got these people that's just keeping these people and going in a circle, spending money. You said y'all are close to how much now? $300,000 with Three. one attorney. With one attorney. I don't know how much it is with the other. They're at close to, th that's Johnson, right? Johnson, yes. They're close to $300,000. Now church of God in Christ. Now y'all just gave the bishop a million dollars to plant trees. <laughs> y'all, we gone. We up out of here. I, I just, I, y'all gave this man a million dollars to plant trees. And y'all got these folks sitting in court with almost $300,000 in legal fees that they don't even have to even deal with. Are y'all for real? And they start... I see on the one. <laughs> I see on all. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in and listening. Oh, Elijah, you can cut it off. Thank you, Elijah.